Good morning, friends. Uh, today I am going to Women's College Hospital to get my LEAP procedure done. I've been super anxious, um, but I'm also ready to get rid of these high-grade precancerous cells. Before we go any further, let's just take a couple of seconds to sort a couple of things out. First of all, here's the definition of what a LEAP procedure is. Now, the reason why I had a LEAP procedure done was because my doctor discovered abnormal high-grade precancerous cells on my cervix which were actually discovered during my appointments in this episode right here. Let's get today started. Time for some coffee. Anytime I'm getting ready to go to a medical appointment that I'm not so sure about, like today, I make sure that I do all the things that make me feel calm and comfortable and for me, Part of that is my morning routine, which is drinking coffee and going for a walk. So this is my favorite place to come to almost every day that I'm able to get out for a morning walk, especially if I have time before work. Cause it's just so beautiful and so peaceful out here and I'm just so fortunate to have this essentially in my backyard. So this is another one of my favorite spots to come to in the morning when I'm coming for walks. It's so peaceful and also super gorgeous here as well. Just give you a little bit of a teaser of the park. So I thought I'd show you what I'm taking with me today. So I'm taking some medication um, for after the procedure, I'm bringing my rain pad with me today, love these. And I'm bringing this um, in case I need it after the procedure's done. And of course some water for hydration. All right, so I'm on my way to my appointment and I have my amazing friend Amanda with me who is accompanying me today because I'm anxious, just to be quite blunt. Full disclosure, I took a little bit of pain medication for the anxiety and I only took half of the pill because I need to just make sure I'm as comfortable and as calm as possible for this procedure. All right, so I'm outside of Women's College Hospital and getting myself mentally prepared to go back inside. I was actually already inside but feeling a little anxious, claustrophobic, so just taking a minute to breathe and get myself ready to go in for my appointments. So I just came out of my late procedure and I'm so thankful that I had my friend Amanda there to talk to me while I was waiting because that was the longest part of the procedure. It was waiting and staring at all the speculums and the laser and all that kind of thing. And so my doctor was amazing as she always is, and the nurse was amazing as well. She talked me through everything and held my hand, which I really needed. So a uh, quick recap of how it went. I only felt the prick of the uh, needle where they freeze you. And then after that, it was just all pressure. So I'm currently still frozen in the vagina area and I expect to be frozen for the next little while and I was told what to expect, so I'm expecting some shedding and some grossness over the next month or so. Can't have anything internal for the next month. Gotta keep things clean and pristine, so I'm gonna let you guys know how I start to feel after the freezing wears off when I get home.
So I am seven hours post-op and I'm just at home relaxing. I sat outside on my balcony for a little bit because it's nice and warm outside and warmth always feels good on your muscles as, as you know. And so far um, everything is pretty textbook in terms of what the doctor at Women's College Hospital told me to expect. So you know once the, wear, the freezing starts to wear off then may or may not feel some some cramping have some discharge that kind of thing the discharge is happening but i'm glad she told me what colors to expect and uh, that kind of thing so if you're wondering there's like a watery discharge and if you're also wondering apparently there may be some ashy shedding of your insides at some point over the next week or so uh, because they did laser um, you know your cervix so the tissue has to come out eventually once it starts to the healing process so anyways um, all things that are normal and to be expected and um, in terms of pain pain's low um, I do feel some cramping but it's not comparable at the moment to and or adeno cramping so it's therefore manageable and I just feel overall unpleasant. I'm glad I have the day to just to myself to just uh, take time to relax and nothing too strenuous. So. Good morning. So today is morning one post sleep procedure and I slept last night so I'm happy about that. As you can see I am in my walking attire Need to make sure that I stick with my morning routine, my daily routine as much as possible, especially because I'm not supposed to do any intense workouts or anything like that for the next few weeks. And I was explained, you know, basically because you don't want to um, aggravate the area, we don't want too much bleeding, and uh, obviously you want to prevent infection as well. Uh, so that being said, I. When I went to bed last night, as anyone from the chronic illness world knows, as soon as you lay down at night, you feel everything. And last night was no exception. I literally thought to myself, I think I can feel every area that was worked on yesterday. And but that being said, again, totally manageable. There was some cramping. I feel there was a little bit of like, like a tingling or stinging sensation. Uh, but it went away and it didn't impact my ability to fall asleep or anything like that. So that's most important. And this morning I took some time to reflect on the procedure that took place yesterday. And I'm very grateful that these cells were found because some people are not as lucky. And it was sort of by chance that this happened. I'm sure it wasn't by chance. I do somewhat believe that things are meant to happen. But that being said, thankful that the pap smear happened that located these cells in the first place so um, I'm also super grateful for this community I had so much love and support uh, through my Instagram page yesterday and from my family and friends and supporters all around just so grateful because I was a ball of anxiety as you can see and um, I made it through So this morning I decided to come for a walk and as you can see I'm in a park which is really close to my home. Um, so the reason I'm doing this video right now is because I think it's good to remind ourselves to always listen to your body. So my first instinct this morning was, okay I'm feeling a little cramping, let me go for a walk because if I'm having mild endo cramping it's useful. But today that might not be the best decision because I just had the procedure yesterday and as I started to walk my body reminded me of this. So as soon as my body made me aware I decided to stop. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to go back home. If I'm being completely honest, last night the cramping was pretty intense. Uh, it was a little more than what I was expecting, but it was still manageable. 
and this morning I was able to get up and go for a walk. I didn't go for a long walk. I learned my lesson yesterday, but I still got up, moved around, and the shedding started today. Another update that I wanted to give you guys is I got a call from my gastroenterologist today following up with me about the blood work and stool tests I submitted a couple of weeks ago. She started off the conversation with me, letting me know right off the bat that there's nothing too alarming. However, my blood work did show elevated levels of inflammation, and therefore I need to go in for a colonoscopy and an endoscopy in one month from now. What do they say? When it rains, it pours. So I'm excited to report that today marks four weeks post leap procedure and I haven't provided any other updates because aside from being very emotional everything else has been pretty much the same so I just want to thank you guys for tuning in I appreciate you don't forget to like subscribe and follow me on Instagram